Little Warriors. How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone's having a good week and um, gravity is working for everyone. Hello, Jays. Nice to meet you. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. So, hi, Sinatra. Everybody. So here you go, big risk off. Just a review of some of the calls I made this week, earlier in the week. It was my call that we were gonna take out the double top at 93.19 in the Dixie and head up towards 93 and a half. The high is 93.50, pretty accurate. I'm not saying that it can't push another time, but this is what I thought could happen. Hello, Hugo, Jatine, regarding the yen. Um, when we were down here, I said, look for a rally to 10, a 110, 110, 20, achieved and now selling off. Euro, we talked about, uh, Blake talked about it too, the 1.618, I think it was 116.50. This could have been enough. Nice divergence, but just like we could get another push up in the Dixie, uh, we could maybe get one more. I don't think we're gonna get another push up in, uh, I think this is a failing rally in Yen, and now we're heading towards the uh, 107.60 level. Oh, uh, thanks, Ben. I missed this. I thought we were gonna pull back, but you know, so many breakdowns everywhere. Nice hold, Grega. Grega Horvat, short on a pattern and play. Both Blake caught it, and Grega stayed with it for an extra 60 pips or so. Uh, Euro Pound continues its, its advance after, you know, something I talked about earlier in the week after we negated the throw over and then pulled back. And here we go, making Euro the preferred long. Cable the preferred short, depending upon your view on the dollar. Uh, gold, again, it's stalled up here. Uh, silver being much weaker. Silver, um, you know, uh, I'm not sure we're done yet to the downside. Gold still the preferred long, as you could tell by this. Another breakdown, crude broke down out of this descending triangle. So I talked about, you know, you could be long with a reverse out stop, which, which would leave you short. And copper is just uh, really completely collapsing after the breakdown. It's taking out the 200-day uh, right here. Uh, s and is hanging on by a thread, uh, taking out this important level. I believe Blake had this level and had confluence here. Uh, not just a support zone, but also a wedge line. So when we see uh, Blake's charts, we'll probably see a breakdown out of that rising wedge. Um, NASDAQ took out the 14,920 level yesterday, pretty negative. We have uh, weekly reversals in both of them. Uh, said, uh, do not sell volatility. And this is why. I said, do not sell volatility, huge day in the VIX yesterday. So I, I hope that some of these calls have helped you out. Anyone catch any of the stuff that I talked about just now? Or help you avoid doing the opposite? Well, all I could do is uh, hope. Jatin caught the VIX, all right, congratulations. Are you a subscriber? Hey, Hugo. Okay. Then I can't pitch you. Tim, would the money is saved, avoiding being long QQQ? You could uh, sign up here. Are you Tim Fury? Uh, you know, if you notice, uh, you know, I did an interview with Helen Helene Meisler. And on TV, there's a commercial where it could be a sporting event or something else going on. And this person that wasn't part of the scene shows up and says, oh, I just invest in QQQ. 
it reminded me of a Barron's cover where they were started really promoting being long QQQ is fashionable because then you own the future. So good avoid on that. So um, I'm going to bring the team in now. We have Mark Newton. Uh, very good day to have Mark. He's an excellent technician. Hope he shows up. And, um, you know, if you've caught him here around CNBC, uh, we'll see if he confirms some of the things I'm talking about. Good morning, Stelio. How are you? How are you good doing? Good morning, today, Coach. Morning, hey, everybody. Hey, buddy. Uh, so, why uh, cable so much weaker than Euro? Do you know? Uh, good question. I mean, the dollar is stronger overall. Why is the, the pound underperforming? I actually don't know. Okay. But, uh, I mean, there wasn't anything. That's a uh, legit answer. Yeah. Uh, but um, we had the FOMC min minutes uh, yesterday. Yeah. And it was uh, effectively the majority of the Fed members agreed that there's going to need to be tapering. So this is in line with what the market um, expects. The question obviously is what kind of tapering, to what extent, what pace, etc. But at the moment, um, markets are prepared for this later this year. Um, and uh, and that's how it is. So the dollar is um, strengthening its um trying to break this 117 in the euro dollar which we've been talking about for a, for a while it broke it earlier yeah, this morning yeah, yeah but it's coming back again i think we need to wait for the us to um uh, well the you know us is coming in now and there's they're starting to yeah. trade so let's see how they push things around but you know commodity currencies are not doing well um i'm sure blake is happy about the uh, dollar norway going higher and um and we're all waiting for next week so um, oh, we've said this yeah, for the Jackson last ten Hall. days. Yeah, we wait for Jackson Hole. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. this is uh, this is the way. <laughs> and, that was, that was you, you. You mentioned Norway. That was a huge overnight trade. I because um, I was I was sized up last night. So I was. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning like wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. It was uh, it was pretty good. Hey, you know, you guys, Dale, you just asked Stelius why the the sterling is is. Uh, it, you know, is down so much. Um, well, I, I mean, I've got a couple answers for you. Now, first of all, I don't, I, I agree with you. N not the right answer or not knowing, not knowing is, is also a good answer because uh, I mean, you know, you, you can say, well, yeah, I'm not really, too, I'm not really don't too know, sure. Right. You yeah, don't, you don't know. You don't know. Not knowing. Yeah. But I will tell you this, that you, you, you even with the guys, um, that you know, I, I trade traded with for years at Gallos. We always were like, okay, you know, here's some risk off. Let's let's lean on the sterling a little bit more. The okay. volatility um, volatility tends to run higher in in the in the sterling. So during periods of risk off, the the pound tends to underperform. Okay. Um, so in That's other true. words, you know, you, you know, when you get like a a risk off move. Let me just show you something really quick. I'll, I'll, I'll take you over. Um, uh, I want to show you just a couple of charts regarding that. And then actually I've got a few charts I need to show you. And, here, you know, but. Stell was talking about, you know, everyone's talking about the taper. I, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, a year and a half after this pandemic started, I need my clothes let out, not tapered. <laughs> oh, it's fun. oh you're you and you're not even a dad that's the sad thing uh yeah, yeah, speaking yeah, of being a, I am, speaking of being a, speaking, speaking of being a dad my uh my son turns my oldest son turns 17 today and i'm oh happy uh, birthday really, yeah i'm really unsure how where that all came from but man it's crazy <laughs> anyway um you, you know what you're some gonna of, let him enlist in the marines next year Hell no. He knows. He knows. He <laughs> never, ever. Join the military. If he actually right. ever joined the military, I told him Air Force, Air Force or Navy. Yeah. But preferably Air Force, because the chow is much better. And there's actually okay. women in there in the Air Force that are not bad looking. Um, uh, so okay. it's good anyway. advice. Thanks. Um, pound. That's where that's where we us Marines would always go scavenge the uh, Air Force bases looking for uh, the women at uh, you at, dogs at yeah. uh, country night at the at the clubs. Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, here's the Sterling. But the pound Aussie is always a, a, a good risk off 
type of trade. So whenever you get risk off, you go long, you know, pound Aussie. But look at the difference between the pound Aussie and then the Euro Aussie. And uh, the Euro Aussie, we obviously we're looking for a breakout. That's what that arrow is doing there. But um, the the Euro Aussie actually acts a little bit better. Then you go over to the Euro Sterling. The Euro Sterling, we all knew it was squeezing out of this uh, this wedge. We had a false breakdown here. So, the, like, there was a lot of there's a lot of there was a lot of things that were leading us to believe that the equity markets were going to sell off the way that they're selling off right now. Um, and you know, and I and I want to take you over to a couple of things. You know, it you guys may not be Forex Analytics subscribers. That's fine. Okay. You probably go to the blog, which is free every day, right? And you get the chart of the day, dollar Mexican peso. Well, you know, if the dollar Mexican peso, I'm sitting there saying, hey, you know, we're probably going to go back to range highs and challenge the 200 day moving average because the S&P is down. Well, you know, that is, you know, suggesting that the dollar Mexican peso is going to go back to range highs that I think it's going to go back to range highs. And the only reason why that's going to happen is because we're going to see some risk off. So. Um, now that we're here and the S&P is where it's at, now the question you're, gonna, you're asking yourself is, what do you do here? Um, and uh, what, you know, do, do, you, do you actually get short now because the S&P has broken below trendline support? So I want to ask you guys this those of you that are not Forex Analytics subscribers, because you guys are already Forex Analytics subscribers, you already know the answer to this question. <clears throat> Should you be shorting S&P right now? What do you guys think? I'd hmm. bounce. Stelios? <coughs> Sorry. Me, if it wasn't... If it wasn't for Jackson Hole coming up and yields being this slow still, I would be shorting it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't now. So. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just getting drink of water. I, I was am going to answer my own but question I, here, but um, yeah. but yeah, why not? It's not late. It's a breakdown. Okay, just starting. You want to see? This is how pivotal this area is. Look at the hourly. Yeah. This is a four-hour chart. Okay. And here's support, here's support, here's resistance. Overnight in Europe, we hit that level. So if you're gonna start a short right now, you know your risk. Like you notice I just set up two alarms on my charts. Uh, also, FYI, I closed out my, um, here, just, here's the Forex Analytics chat room. You know, I, trade a lot. Um, and having this trades room is actually quite nice because, you know, I can go here and say yesterday, long dollar Mexican peso, long US dollar Norwegian Krona. Closed all US dollar longs about less than an hour ago. Okay. Um, I took half off and I'm like, you know what? I want out. I want out of everything. Now you're probably like, well, why, Blake, why'd you get out of everything? Well, if you look at the daily chart of the S and P and you look at this trend line here, this is obviously where we're, we're probing it right by the end of the day, it's going to tell us a lot. Um, by the end of the day, I'm going to know whether my actions were a good action or a bad action, but being profitable the way I was overnight, I had to book profits. It was, it's summertime, too big of a position for me not to book profits. If you look at this trend line, we have been below it before. Now you might say, well, Blake, you, you adjust the trend line. You can adjust the trend line all over the place, but let's look at, this is a four hour chart and you're going back from October, 2020, right? That's where it's going. Low, low. Shit, I didn't mean it. Every time you move it, it'll, it'll do that again. Low, touch, touch, breach.
breach. Okay, so if you didn't have the foresight to be short equities over the last two days, or do not, you know, play it on the, you know, play the dollar on the long side, or, you know, take some sort of equivalent trade to that over the last couple of sessions, if you, if you hadn't been doing that over the last couple of sessions or buying the yen or, you know, doing trades like that, then to start a position right now, you have to know where your risk is. And I believe at this point in time, if you get back above 4380, 4385, you're going to find yourself on the wrong side of this of the market pretty quick today. This is the middle of August. There is zero liquidity. So just be really careful today. As I as I just mentioned, I I know I know exactly where the market's going to break today. You get above here or you get below there and this is going to tell you if you're off sides. That the what happened in Europe right here told us the story. So you can right now, if you really want to get in the market because you don't have any, you know, you're like, don't have any ability of controlling yourself and taking trades. Um, sure. Go ahead. You know, you know, you know, you got to know where your risk is. And that's, that's the bottom line with any trading you do. Well, that's the first question I ask myself when I'm getting into a trade, where's my risk? So if you short right now, then you should know that, you know, we get back above like this 4385, maybe even this, this previous hourly low, that's where your risk is. You get above here and you, you probably don't want to be short anymore. Right. And the flip side is, is if you're, if you're like, well, screw this, Blake, it's summer. <clears throat> This market's not going anywhere. I just had somebody in our chat room just a moment ago, uh, Julius, which I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to point out, but he said, you know, I think we're oversold here. We're going back to 4,500 before it's all all said and done. Look, that's what makes a market. So if if that's your take and you're like, I'm bullish here, I'm going to play this false breakdown. I'm going to get long because all these suckers are shorting into these lows right here, which could very well be this case. Then where's your risk? My opinion is your risk is below these lows, right? So I think right now is a little dicey to be to be trading, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I think above these highs or below these lows will tell a lot about what's going to happen today. I hate to be chasing the market <laughs> on August 19th when half of the world is on vacation. So, but at the same time, time i have to admit that the market looks pretty shaky here and it looks pretty 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 scary so i you know i look i've been i've, I've played the short side of this market basically in the fx equivalent being long yen and long dollars over the last three days now that we're here i closed up everything and i don't want to I, I i have zero exposure right now so that's smart well you know yeah, and, and I I don't know about you guys, but over the last couple of years, minus the COVID lockdown crap, but over the last two, three years, I've had on many occasions shorted into this type of situation, had the had the, had the market right up in my face. You know, we've been in some very bullish trends over the last several years. So, you know, it's you know, to get caught. To get caught down here you may you may win you may not i don't know i'm gonna see what the market i'm gonna see what the market uh, uh i'm gonna let the market show its hand from here because it was an easy play the last couple of days and um you know we've had a lot of confirm confirming moves we've had copper down we've had crude break down we've had yields break lower we've had precious metals reject 1800 uh, and, and gold, silver at 24 bucks. A lot of things have led to where we're at right now, but where we're at right now, it's uh, not not an easy answer, I don't think. So anyway, the, just my my two cents. So the times they are a changing Bob Dylan. 
Uh, DJ, hey, you know what? DJ said the 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 um the market sell off is not just restricted in North America either. You're right. You're hundred yeah. percent correct. That is uh that is a true statement. Matter of fact, if you read um, uh, let's go over back to the. Um, by the way, this is the crude breakdown from yesterday at sixty five. That was uh that that's one of those. Um, just take a look at crude really quick. This this is what led me to short the. Uh, Norwegian Krona, by the way. Let me let me just show you what Norway looks like and why I covered it up today. Right? Butterfly. And that's a Gartley. Um, so if you a Gartley if, butterfly. Yeah, if you um use Forex analytics, you got that analysis um about an hour ago that we reached the Gartley top. Uh, we were looking to target that uh, since August 17th, that was two days ago, the, the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona broke the descending trend line and a move to 9.02 level to complete the Garley looks possible. That was on the 17th of August. Today, two days later, it's complete. So now that we're here, you know, you probably don't want to be long anymore, right? Now, what led me to do that is if you look at crude oil and crude breakdown of the wedge at minimum, the 61 uh, level, however, the intraday RSI hits oversold, blah, blah, blah. The last update is valid and below the 66 level, we would tar target the 200 day moving average, which comes in right there. Now, the problem with with all this with crude is we've reached 63 which was my original target we've already hit that but i extended that out to 6150 to get towards the 200 day moving average but the thing is i might i might have been a little bit too aggressive here because uh that 63 would have completed everything um but we're a little oversold and uh you know, I think you have to sell crude on rallies now. So, you know, if you can get a sell off somewhere around 64 and a quarter, I think that's more doable. And so if you put all this together, you go, oh, well, if crude rallies back, copper rallies back. Uh, let's look at copper really quick. Uh, Good call you, on copper. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, is here we are probing the 200 day moving average. Um, if you are short these assets, right. And I didn't make a call on copper Dale. That wasn't me. So I don't, it, it might've been, uh, somebody else, probably Steve or maybe Stelios. I don't know. Stelios, have you been talking about copper? I haven't. So, nope. No, okay. not me. Um, so no, it wasn't me anyway, but, okay. uh, uh, but look at here. Okay. And matter of fact, This not even close to being done yet, right? But that's where copper should go, theoretically, based on this head and shoulder pattern. That's where it should go. But look, we're probing the 200-day moving average. In my opinion, copper looks like it's going to do this. So if we bounce from here, crude bounces from here, you can see crude's near its highs of this you know, session, it's getting towards the highs in Europe. You know, we see a move like that in copper. We see crude oil bounce. What do you think is going to happen in S&Ps? Well, the S&Ps are probably going to go, hey, I suckered you all in. You know, I, I suckered all you shorts in and then, you know, rip up. And I, I don't know, man, every, every day you get that lunchtime rally, you know, gap up at the open then you know catches everybody short it happened just two days ago right the market was everybody's getting all bearish on this breakdown and then we gapped up at the open then lunchtime we rallied and then by the end of the day we we just kind of you know petered out but this is this is the price action from two days ago on the 17th intraday in north america what's to say we can't do that again here and just kind of squeeze back up towards 4,400. So I don't know. I, I, I get a little nervous here. And then, then you get everybody saying, Oh, that was a false breakdown. The next thing you know, we're trading back at 4,450 by 
Friday because the markets always rally on Fridays for whatever freaking reason, you know? So all I have to say is be careful down here. What are you going to do, Stell? I'm going to do very little ahead of next week. Um, so, yeah, that's my view. You know, we've seen this play out so many times. And like I said before, yields are still low. I see no reason why anything should change yet. Uh, but obviously next weekend could be uh, could be the big trigger. A um, couple of other things I wanted to mention before we um, hand it over to Dale. Uh, we had- wait, wait be, that you were going to mention, were you going to mention something that Mark Chandler mentioned ah. today in his, uh, in his um, Trader Summit um, post? No, I, I just said that I posted on the chat. I thought it was, it's a really great summary every day that he writes. I mean, really, really great. Even if you just read the, the highlights, the bullet points at the top that he has, um, you know, people who, who are based in the States, you know, you wake up, you click on his uh, latest post, bang, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, you know what's happened. It's really, it's, it's a really great, um, I really, really like Mark Chandler. Um, but uh, no, I wasn't going to mention anything more about that. I was just okay. going to say that we had the uh, Norges Bank interest rate decision today. They didn't uh, hike rates. They weren't expected to, but they are guiding us that they're going to be hiking later this year and uh, once every quarter next year. And um, we know that Norges Bank is not a slow moving uh, central bank. They are not uh, uh, like others. They do tend to act relatively quickly if they think that action is needed. So I do take them for their word and I would love Euro Norway, Dollar Norway to just spike a little bit more so I can sell into them. Um, And uh, we also had Aussie Australian employment data and unemployment uh, rates dropped. So employment was better than expected. But, uh, you know, by by, by the way, Stelios, regarding that, you know, that um, that happened, that uh, that that number happened right here. And I saw so many people getting long the Aussie dollar last night uh, in Asia. I was like, oh, you guys are going to really hurt <laughs> after that one. Yeah, I, I, I was going to tweet about it. And I was just like, oh, God, I was preparing for my son's birthday today. So, yeah, everybody got sucked in the market right there. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, anyway. a, it's a good number. But when the dollar is rallying over all across the board, there's no chance that this is going you to, higher, Yeah, you so. have to sell yeah. into that strength anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's an opportunity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, um, one, one of the things that I want to mention today regarding the euro, it, it, and this is why you read, you know, like you go on a trader summit, read some of these updates here. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I wanted to click on his actual uh, his article. This is one of the key takeaways. If you don't, if you didn't read this today, or you don't know this today, um, here we go. Let me find it. Uh, da, 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 right here. There are two point five billion euros options expiring today. Two point five billion on a on a on a on a summer August weekday. Okay, that is going to keep us at one seventeen probably for the next couple hours. So if you're wondering why you know the euro had drifted back to one seventeen overnight, that's it. And if you guys are you know long, you better keep that in mind too because once those options expire this morning then the euro will be free to move around the cabin. Well, it's a low in the euro at your uh, FIB extension number, Blake, that um, you talked about yesterday. The 161% oh. extension, it's it, just shy of it, which doesn't okay. surprise me that we get yeah. just real close to those, those levels. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be short. And you don't want to be short euros in a risk-off environment either because the euro is going to outperform um, as a you know funding currency. It's going to outperform in a risk-off environment you know, it doesn't mean that it won't go down. It's just going to go down less. Um, you know, DJ had pointed out about, um, about you know, North American markets are not the only markets. You're right. Um, if, if you, the DAX, we knew it was going to break down yesterday. So, you know, the DAX is obviously in a, in a wedge, just like the S&P. But, you know, if you're, you should know that, oh, crap, I didn't want to do that. Sorry, I just launched something that I didn't want to. 
um, you know, no, you know, this is last night, you know, with the sell off in the U S markets, you, you had to know that we're going to break this 15,800 level in the, in the DAX. That was like a given. This was yesterday. You could have sold DAX futures that hadn't moved anywhere. But when you saw that sell off in the U S equity markets, you knew we were going to just plunge through that support. Um, By the way, we just got data, which was in line. So don't worry about it. Okay, thanks. Um, and so, anyway, I, I wanted to just since DJ was ma uh, mentioning about the uh, the the not the U.S. markets not being the only markets that we need to pay attention to, hundred percent agree with that. And and uh, and you know, even like the Nikkei and stuff, you have to just watch these markets because they are all coiling. But I'm going to warn you all again. Just remember, we are at a very very tricky area in the S and P. Um, we've been we've probed this trend line support before we've failed to break down. Uh, I'm not saying that that's going to happen today, but just be really careful, especially as Stelios pointed out, it is Jackson Hole coming up uh, next week. So just keep that in mind. All right, Dale, I know, I know you have Mr. Mark Newton coming on. He's always great to listen to. You guys should stick around. He's a real treat um, because, here. you know, when, when you hear Mark on you know CNBC or, or Bloom or Bloomy, you know, you only get him for, you know, a minute. 30 seconds, whatever his piece might be here. You guys get him for a good half an hour. So, uh, so Dale, have fun with Mark and I'm um, glad to have him here. I don't think he's here. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, After that, all that like introduction, Steve. that was amazing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd like, well, to Hey, you guys, you guys, today. Steve Bogey. Steve? Hey, what's up? Hey, no, what? So Mark's all not right. here. No. Oh, yeah, this yeah. first time he's missed. Uh, I know he's interview. he's like one of those most punctual people. He's like what? Yeah. That, that's the craziest thing. Mark Newton, call him Mark Newton. Raise your hand if you're here. I sent a message. It's on Twitter too. So no wow, response. that's yeah, that's kind of you know, what, I, you know what, Blake. This is Mark why has never not showed up. Let's put it that this way. This is why uh, sometimes I uh, you know have a Friday open. I'll, I'll try and catch him sometime today and get them to drop in tomorrow because this is a pretty important week that's market. pretty astonishing we do have though six marks yeah listening in yeah we have so, six marks yeah yeah, yeah. but not, so, not a, any not a, any of you want to be newton today oh uh, want that to are, be a that are listening newton? in six I love marks that are listening <laughs> yeah. got it um you know, Steve, yeah, why but, don't you just show us your beautiful, since Mark is in here, uh, show us the beautiful place that you're at. Are you still on vacation? Of course I'm still on vacation. What kind of a question is that? <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how many months does it last? Uh, until uh, next September. Uh, hey, wait, hey, wait <laughs> really, really quick. Uh, uh, Jeff just asked... Um, about is, is it Mark Noon or Mark Chandler? Mark Chandler is he he also um yeah he's Mark Chandler is a contributor here on Trader Summit, but also Mark Newton is too. So Mark Newton, um, well actually you can you can Chandler switch. with a C and oh wow you're using Mark. Nick Santiago too. Yeah, Nick's good. Yeah, Gareth Soloway. So Mark Newton also. <sighs> You can read his, this is Mark, and he's he's been on here. He's been, how many times have you interviewed Mark Newton? My God, Dale, at least at least a dozen times, it seems like. In four years? years. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I would say a lot of times, but yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's a great technician. I've been following him on Twitter, and we've communicated on Twitter probably the last seven or eight years, I would say. And he's just, he's a... Uh, He's a, he's really good at what he does. So anyway, um, but yeah, he's uh, it's a weird because he's never been not here. <laughs> so that's the weirdest yeah. thing. Well, you know, I'll try and uh, see if I could get him to show up tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be cool. Hey, so Steve's here from uh, Steve. You're you're uh, you're reporting in from Corfu Island. Corfu. Yeah, Kerkira is the Greek name. Uh, to be honest, I. I should probably Google this. I have no idea why, uh, how the name Corfu came to be. Um, but for some reason, foreigners know it as Corfu. Um, you know, the Eptansa, the island between uh, the mainland of Greece and Italy, uh, have passed through uh, Italy occupancy for many years, and then France, then UK, 
uh, for some years before being returned back to Greece. So they're, they're very nice. They have influences for you know from more than uh, one cultures, uh, you know, other than the obvious Greek one. Um, I, I you know I strongly suggest people. Uh, I strongly suggest people um, you know visit them. I, although I have to. I have to say that, uh, you know, my favorite one is Kefalonia. If you see, it's a little bit southern uh, from Kerkira, Blake. Yeah, on the same side, but a little bit southern. Yeah, if you zoom in. Yeah, there, there you go. That's Kefalonia. Right there? No, that's the sea. That's a, yeah, there it is. Oh, I, well, no, I, I wasn't sure. Sometimes these islands are so small. It's no, like, no, no, uh, no. Kefalonia is not a small island. Oh, uh, okay. You can, you can see it over there uh, on the south side of your screen. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, the you know, very beautiful and very warm seas and um, rather green islands because, you know, the opposite from Kiklades, uh, which, which don't have much green, Eptansa do have a lot of green. Very beautiful islands. Yeah. You, should, you, you know, it, I, Corfu is one of those places that every time, uh, every time, the, the, the two times I've spent, you know, my times in Greece, my wife was like, we've got to get to Corfu because we're always in the uh, the Cyclades where I think that's yes. where most of you guys are always visiting, right? Because there's Athens and you guys are all always down here. Uh, yeah, you know, something. some of the Cyclades islands are very nice and we have plenty of them uh, to go around. Uh, I, Naxos, for example, I prefer it. Santorini, as you very well know, Blake. Is very yeah. different to anything else because uh, it, it used to have a volcano. I mean, it still has a volcano, but it's an inactive one, right? There's so this Andrea. exactly. So this the scenery is, uh, you know, completely different than anything else you, you're going to find. Uh, but I think that um, uh, you know you want to visit. Uh, I think uh, Ptansa with um, Corfu, Zakynthos, Kefalonia being the main three ones. Rhodes, which is on the other side uh, of the map. Um, and Crete are probably, you know, the places you want to be. Crete is huge, you know, on the south, as you see on the bottom right of your screen. It's yeah. all that huge island. Right there. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's huge. I mean, the, you know, Crete has a lot of things you can see and a lot of different scenery, you know, mountains, seaside on the south side, which is towards uh, Africa. So, you know, totally different type of sea. The north side, with which is, you know, overlooking the Aegean. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, these are places you, you know, you want to go. Okay. okay. Well, we, we've heard a lot about Greece, Steve. And I, I, just since it's on the screen right now, I have to point out my favorite city in, 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 in Greece is really Nathleon right here. And Nathleon is beautiful. It's beautiful. one of my, my favorite cities, uh, uh, that's uh, inland, but anyway, let's, let's, uh, let's shift the uh, conversation to, what are you seeing? Italy. Are you seeing anything out there? I mean, stocks are obviously down today. We've seen this big move. Yeah, listen, I'm monitoring the, board, the same, so. the same, uh, the same ascending wedge you are, right? And I think it's very, very, very important because it's not just us that monitor the S and P. I mean, the S and P is the global barometer for risk. That's what I've been saying during the past two days. I've been saying that. Listen, you know, this this trend line support is uh, super important because it's actually like the uh, you know, the most obvious um, uh, area under which you start having some tech, some bearish technical events taking place, right? Until that happens, I mean, what is it like? A 2-3% sell-off? I mean, th these things happen, right? Yeah. So in my opinion, now that we're probing the area below it, today is going to be a key day. Can uh, the bulls uh, push the market to close above it? Uh, I think that's going to show us that they, they're still, you know, um, uh, pretty well in charge of the whole situation. But do we end up breaking down? Uh, I think we then open the door for a more proper corrective move, which fundamentally speaking uh, is aligned with the market starting getting right and left jitters that we're getting closer to. Uh, tapering. Now, I've explained before why why I think that uh, the whole um, taper tantrum, the new one, the upcoming one, uh, is going to prove to be a flop, uh, be simply because uh, the um, the situation is still uh, and the monetary policy is still extremely, extremely uh, easy, 
uh, considering that now inflation is rampant. I mean, we, we, we have inflation surpassing uh, 6% as we speak. So taking that into consideration, uh, monetary policy is more easy than it has ever been, even if we reduce the pace by which even if we reduce the pace by which we, we uh, buy bonds, right? Because don't forget, we're not even considering hiking rates as we speak, right? We're not even considering tightening the balance sheet, which has exploded from 3.7, 3.8 trillion dollars, which is the point at which uh, we got after the short-term tapering to more than 8 trillion as we speak. So we're not considering uh, tightening, we're not considering hiking, we are considering slowing the pace of um, right. of monetizing the debt. Yeah. So yeah. we're not in essence stepping. Uh, we're not in essence pushing on the brake. We are considering stepping a little bit of the easing of the gas after having accelerated to 200 miles per hour. Um, but in any case, the market doesn't like it, and I, I understand why. Right, because. Um, monetary policy and um, easy monetary policy and fiscal uh, expansion and all that are, are things that are like drugs. The more you take, the more you need to stay high. So, um, yeah, so I, I do think that this is the fundamental backdrop for the market to finally show some jitters. We had seen already in advance, I think you mentioned it before, Blake, some divergences, you know, the main divergence I was monitoring, Blake, and I mentioned it uh, the day before yesterday, it was uh, the one with the Aussie yen, the Kiwi yen. I mean, these uh, sensitive, um, risk sensitive FX pairs, they yeah, had turned I mean, lower much earlier. We, you know, uh, uh, I was short Friday. Uh, Thursday, Friday. So, I mean, and I clo I closed mine up. I closed my Aussie yen short Monday down here um, at as we were approaching the support. I, I mean, but they continue to break lower. I mean, so this 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 move alone, just us breaking lows that we haven't seen since. I mean, these are new 2021 lows. You know, this this alone, if you're if you're relying just on a on a on a correlation i mean this move right here suggests that we we are going to eventually break down today but you know yeah so so personally I, although i completely uh feel your worry we've seen i mean we are in such a messed up environment that even when you get i mean the, we've created a financial environment that which was never the case in the past, right? Uh, and up until like a few years ago, and it became even worse since COVID. That even if they told you, if somebody came today and told you, listen, tomorrow there's going to be like a nuclear bomb falling, falling somewhere, you're not going to be 100% there's going to be a sell off, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we've created such a distorted environment that things that would be a no brainer sell tomorrow. Yeah, you know, you're not 100% sure anymore. You're like, yeah, okay. You know, that should be very, very bearish. But, you know, who knows? It might, there might be a bullish spin in that, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. I mean, and that's, and that's, that, that is, that is gonna, um, that, that's possible. But, uh, but anyway, I, you know, Steve, the thing is, is I, I think what people really have to understand here is, we are in a toxic environment. Be careful getting too carried away. It is summer. And, um, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is being in the summer, there's not a lot of participants. Uh, we've sold off pretty aggressively. Yeah, we, 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 which we can have, prove to be a double-edged sword. It, 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 it can be. We could get the market whipping up, uh, you know, whipping right back uh, after this prolonged sell-off. Uh, or prolonged sell-off over the last couple of days, we could we could see this massive bounce back in 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 and and assets like you know crude and copper and the dollar could pull back and you know we could all just chalk it up to it's summer and uh, I'm I'm like I'm looking at the dollar like for example I'm I'm looking at the dollar max I was long overnight I already pulled it off the table you mean you're already seeing like this false breakout we 
came back to the range high as, as expected. And now, now the dollar Mexican peso is starting to roll over. And, you know, we're breaking some intraday, you know, this, I say intraday, these are intraday ascending trend lines, we're breaking them. So now you're like, well, shoot, if I'm starting to see the peso start to, to, to rally here and, you know, and, and, and it's starting to, you know, recover, what does that tell me about the S&P? Well, the S&P probably might, you know, squeeze back up towards the highs and then everybody gets cut short and yada, yada, yada. So, I mean, that's why today you have to be very, very careful. I think today is not a day where you let your guard down. It's not a day where you, you know, frivolously just start trading because you're like, oh, I got this gut feeling. No, I think today is a day where you actually are, are, are looking to, you know, the signal was recognizing the hanging man um, on two, on Monday, I believe. You know what, Dale? I, I agree with you because we had hanging mans all over the place, but I can, I can also count on my fingers and toes how many hanging man failed over the last yeah. year. So, yeah. I, I mean... It's what I said before. This market has changed. I mean, uh, very, very uh, powerful reversal formations that worked... Uh, frequently in the past yeah you know we keep ignoring them in in whatever it has to do with risk assets right i mean we yeah. create one of them and then next day it's like nothing happened so frequently yeah here's your hanging man there's your hanging man you know the the uh the uh here's a here's another one there's a good one over here that uh you know here's a hanging man <laughs> it's like i mean i can't tell you how many times i've like I, I have literally, and I could just go on and on and on over the last couple of years said, Oh, there's a hanging man. I, and, and it's always the same thing for me. There's a hanging man. I definitely don't want to be bullish, but usually I'd be shorting, but I don't know, you know, and, but it did, it, it felt, it, 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 you know, aggressively moved. And I, I think you combine that hanging man with being at the top of the wedge and being divergent. I mean, you, you combine a bunch of things and eventually it's going to weigh on the market, but now that we're here, well, on the other hand, Blake, this, is, this reminds me a little bit of the um, cry wolf myth, the story, you know, that, um, you know, the, the kid cries, you know, wolf for fun, you know, villagers come to help, you know, there's no wolf uh, again, 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 at some point, you know, they stop responding to the call. And when the wolf actually comes, nobody believes him, you know what I mean? So at some point, we're going to be getting the beginning of like a massive sell off. And every, everybody's now numb, like, uh, you know, we've seen daily reversals before and they yield nothing. Oh, yeah. I, I, can, I can guarantee you this. And Dale knows exactly what I'm saying. We will be in a market probably sometime in the nearer future that we're going we're gonna to be looking at the market saying, oh, my God, this market never rallies. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Dale, do you, do you remember those markets? They happen. Yeah, sure they do. Yeah, I mean, we'll be in markets where we're going to go, oh my God, this market is never going to rally again. And just like we're in a market right now where you're like, it never sells off. And so, you know, uh, and, and we'll, we'll probably be in extreme. I was thinking about that yesterday as I was, uh, I was uh, driving um, to, I, my wife had some stuff to do at the office. So at her office. And I, so I, I went to go pick up my kids, um, um, from school and, uh, I was sitting there going, man, this market is trading heavy, but I'm like, but remember we're in a bullish market. That the market also always... rationalize a five to 10% sell off as being normal. And they're going to buy into these dips. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, you know bull they're going to buy, right? Hard. They're going to buy in those dips until it doesn't work anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah, until yeah. we're 30, 40% lower. <laughs> and then they go, holy crap. <laughs> uh, maybe I should get out and that'll be the right. Bottom. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so, um, a, 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 sick, a, a, sick well, hopefully game. you get a hold of Mark Newton and I'll um, try. Yeah. I'm sure he'll pop it. I'm sure he was, he's probably like, oh my God, I yeah. forgot this. And then, uh, you know, I'll see you tomorrow and hopefully we can yeah. bring him back in tomorrow. Okay. I'll, I'll give, uh, Steve, we'll see you in uh, we'll see you in about uh, thirty minutes on the um, morning. Yes, edge you'll see me in twenty five minutes. Yeah, yeah, and and hey guys, just really quick, I I, I want to mention, um, I actually got my very first, um, I got my very first uh, uh, 
um, uh, reimbursement check, my, my cash back rebate check for, from, uh, from Forest Park. And, and Sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And yeah. somebody mentioned, somebody mentioned, oh, Blake, you got, you got actually a real check. I, I said, I, I think it's because I live in the U S but yeah, if you, um, if you, uh, if you're trading and you're not getting a cash back rebate, do it. Now I couldn't trade my personal account for the last five years. I was trading for, um, uh, Gelos and, you know, an, another, you know, another sister company of Gelos for the last five years, you know, and that's what I was doing. So I couldn't trade my own, we called a, a, you know, PA or personal account. I wasn't allowed to. So, you know, after, you know, I s- stopped trading for them, um, you know, over the last few months and I'm like, shoot, I get to trade my own account again. I went to, you know, the guys at Forest Park. I'm like, Hey, uh, you know, I want this cash back rebate thing. And now I'm getting, <laughs> I got a check. I got a check in the mail uh, this last week. It's pretty cool. So if you guys aren't doing that, make sure you, you, everybody should be. Um, and if you're not, then contact them. It's right here. Steve has been doing it for years and I'm like, how cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually receiving it in, uh, in my PayPal account. Yeah. And, and that's, I'm assuming because you're European, but because I'm in the U S I actually get a check. I almost threw it away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's because I get so much junk mail, you know, I almost threw it away. Anyway, um, you can contact them right here. You can contact them live on Skype or email brokers at Forex Analytics. Um, the guys at Forest Park, their team, uh, guys and gals, actually, they address that email. Um, so you can contact them directly. So make sure you do that. All right. All right. Okay, I just so, got well, all the mark will be with us tomorrow. Oh, okay. good. That's good. Okay. Great. That's good. All right. That is good. So, so uh, guys, sorry about that today. Stay tuned to mo- for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not only a great host, I'm a pretty good booker. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and, the book and interviews now, sometimes it's not so. Can you imagine trying to do four or five of those a week? Yeah, I mean, it's, people, huh? you know, it's, uh, it's, it's one of it's these things. Huh? It's one of these things that's very, very easy to do <laughs> if you haven't done it. If you haven't done, you know what I mean? People think it's easy. Like, you know, you send a yeah. mail or you you, yeah, you get somebody on, 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 uh, on the phone yeah. and it's like 10 seconds. But once you try doing it, oh, you yeah. realize that, you know, there are complexities that people that haven't done it can't figure out. Yeah, what your right. audience, how many uh, get I Yeah, yeah, anyway, exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Anyway, he'll be here tomorrow. Great. Perfect. All right. Well, All right, guys. Guys, thank you so much. Dale, thank you so much. Stelio, Steve, good to hear your voices as always. Hey, and, congratulations um, on having a good month yesterday. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, <laughs> last last night's trades were... I could tell by your voice you had a good month yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I did. It was, uh, I did. Uh, it's good to have, uh, you know, it, it's... The trading's been good, surprisingly good this month. Um, if you look at, you know, like uh, just go to the patterns in play and just see kind of some of the trades that have been happening over the last few weeks, it's been good in this environment for the summer. So for August, just, yeah. For, for August. Really so just there's been a lot of, A, there's been a lot of patterns developing. That's what a pattern in play is. But the opportunities that we've seen in currencies – uh, this month have been great and it's been very readable, which, um, you know, I'm excited for where this fall. I think volatility in the currency market is going to really oh, pick yeah. up. Yeah. It's pray to the, pray to the Greek gods that yeah, that's interest the, rate decisions are, 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 are shifting. And when interest rate, interest rate expectations shift, you know, whether we're not, we're all at zero or not, Volatility is going to rise, and so that's that's a good thing for for current. Let, let's hope this is the beginning of something, and not just you know another a tease, another tease. Yes, yeah, another uh, tease. Yeah, another will, MT market tease. Yeah, right. yeah. Will lead to another two months of boring. <laughs> I don't think so. All right, guys, I got to go. Wish right, my, uh, my 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 newly minted seventeen year old happy birthday. You guys have a great day. Happy birthday. All right. Thanks. All right. See you guys. And see remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Minutes. Join us tomorrow to wrap the week with Mark Newton.